Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Godin and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we'll bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Hello and welcome, world, to the Call by God podcast. I'm yours truly, Nixon Sylvain, and I'm here with Sister Gordon. Sister Gordon, how are you doing on this blessed day, my sister? Good morning, Brother Nick. I am wonderful. I thank you so very much for, you know, all that you do. Um, And I'm grateful and thankful to God for saying, Adney, I want you here on this time side of life because your mission is not complete. So I'm grateful and thankful for that. How are you doing? Before I say how am I doing, I didn't call you by your government name. I just said Sister Gordon. I don't know if you picked that up. Because usually I get out, I'll message you. I'll be like, Sister Adney Godin. I just said, Sister Godin. <laughs> so I got you. Next time I'll just say, Sister AG. AG. <laughs> you know, or I'll just mix it up. <laughs> GA. <laughs> but I'm blessed, Adney. I'm blessed by the grace of God. God is good, Adney. I'm so thankful that, that I'm in a, a walk, this walk that we call hope, peace, joy, redemption. I mean, there's so many things that tie into our walk. That's only if you're walking in Jesus, right? You have that only in Jesus. So I'm thankful, Adney, that God has forwarded me another opportunity and just to share his word. So Adney, should I do a drum roll? (laughs) But before you get, before you share the word of the day, Adney, let's do this. Um, I want to, again, I'm so humble. I'm just thanking all of our listeners that that support us, that that share our episodes, and even those that have left reviews. I also want to thank them. Um, it's just a blessing, Addy, um, knowing that uh, we're globally. Um, people are listening to us throughout the country, throughout the world. And it's a blessing because I don't get high on that. I just get high on when people get saved. So when people say, you know, I submit to Jesus Christ. I think that's the greatest blessing that I could ever get, you know, forget about the reviews or anything else. It's just the thought of somebody really surrendering and giving their lives to Christ. So with that being said, Adney, what's the word for today? Okay, so I'm reading this in the Amplified Version. It is Proverbs 26, 12, and it reads, do you see a man who is unteachable and wise in his own eyes and full of self-conceit? There is more f- hope for a fool than for him. I was like, what? Unteachable and conceited. Like, you can't tell me nothing. I know it all. There is more hope for a fool than for him. Because at least a fool will listen to somebody. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, that, that verse is powerful because that was me in the world. You know, before, before I knew Christ, before I got saved, I thought I knew it all. Oh, you can't tell me nothing. Like, you know, <laughs> I was foolish. You know, I thought I'd do everything. Like some folks used to try to sit me down and say, hey, young man, can I, can I share some with you? I'd be like, nah, man, who, do, who does dude think he is? Like, <laughs> who does dude think he is, man? Like, so I, I always had that notion that, okay, I, I had it all until God had to humble me and show, show me that I don't got it all together and that I don't know it all. So I like the verse that you picked. That was, it resonated with me. It touched me. But we know that we know we have somebody on this show that has listened (laughs) to the father and to wise men. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I'm just Mm -hmm. happy. I I, I should give you the honors. Um, It's just a a blessing um, to always have people to share their story, how God have called them. And every time we have this opportunity, it's a blessing for me. So go ahead, Adney. All right, world. This this gentleman right here is my homeboy, my friend. We developed a great friendship. Um, I could tell him anything. He could tell me anything. We joke. We laugh. We get mad at each other. <laughs> but he is such a gentle, gentle soul. And I am grateful and thankful that the Lord has uh, blessed us to meet um, in a time of pandemic, believe it or not. Uh, my brother, 
friend, brother, Arvel Draper. Welcome to the Call by God podcast. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am doing great. Good morning, brother Nick. Good morning, Adney. It's a pleasure to be on here. Yes, man. It's it's good to have you here, man. It's it's like I was sharing with the world, man. It's always a blessing when somebody, you know, answered a call, you know, to right. share their story of how God has called them. So that's what we're going to do now. So, but before we do so, I want you to share with the world, uh, Brother uh, Draper. Uh, tell the, the world a little bit about yourself. A little bit about Arvell Draper. Let's see. Um, born and raised in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, at age 17, uh, went straight to the military. I uh, did some traveling around uh, the United States, the world. Um, landed up in Columbus, Georgia for my last duty station. Uh, became a husband. Um, father, um, divorced, um, and winded up here at ATL. Uh, but most importantly, um, with me, I am a Christian. That's the most important quality about myself. And, and, and although I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian who is striving each day to try to do what's right. And, and sometimes that's not easy. You know, um, you can easily say we're a Christian and uh, I have it all together. I'm, I'm perfect. That's that's not the case. So I'm just happy for God's um, his uh, steadfast love and his renewed mercies each day. And, and according to Lamentations, chapter three, twenty two and twenty three. So that's a little bit, bit about who Arvell Draper is. Amen. Amen. As Sister Adney, I know the world is in for a treat. Because he mentioned uh, quite a few things, married, divorce, travel, military, mm -hmm. Christian man of God is not easy. So mm -hmm. I'm sure people is going to be anxious just to hear your story. So, Brother Draper, we want you to go way back, man. We want you to go way back of when God first called you. But before actually for God call you, we want you to kind of like walk us through your journey, how life was okay. like uh, before Christ. And then we're going to gradually go up until when you finally submitted to the will of God. And also, we're also going to talk about what other experiences that you have experienced with God to draw closer to him. So we want to know, sure walk us through your journey. How was life like before Christ? Well, to be honest with you, I've known Christ for a very long time because I was fortunately, unfortunately fortunate to grow up in the church. And I know that sounds very crazy to say that I was uh, unfortunately fortunate to grow up in the church. But um, at a very early age, I, I, I knew the Lord. I was in church all the time. Every time the doors open, I was there. Um, I was in several singing groups, um, Bible classes. Every Sunday morning, it was expected that we was getting up and going to church. So that was instilled in me at a very early age. And uh, growing up in the church, I, I, I was the one of always the uh, oddball. And I still am the oddball. Um, I, I didn't do certain things like other people or other Christians did. And I remember going on several um, uh, youth events and my reality that everybody wasn't really acting like a Christian should. And we was in the hotel because the, the school was all filled and, and there was some activities that were going on that wasn't Christian like. And that was my first major like, wow, aren't we supposed to be at the church? You know, and, and th at that point, I realized that everybody who says that they are Christians aren't really a Christians. And, and to your point, not everybody. See, God is always calling us, but not everybody's going to answer the call right away. And we hope that they answer the call right away. So at a very early age growing up, um, I knew the Lord. I, I studied um, and just knew that I was supposed to do what was right. Peer pressure never worked with me, um, even even through high school. It, it never worked with me because I was, I was dedicated to being a Christian. However, that was my mom and dad's religion. That was instilled in me. And you, you hear the scripture that says, train up a child in the way he should go, that he won't depart from it when he is, when he is old. Um, and it's always stuck with me. And even when I had my prodigal son uh, phases, because it was more than just one that, that happened, um, I still knew that what I was doing was not of God. And so um, even, though I, even though I knew God, you know, 
I still hadn't answered that call because that religion was my mother and my father's religion. Um, so that, that kind of, kind of my background of, of, of me knowing, knowing the Lord. And, and, and again, as I said, because it was my mother and father's religion, it wasn't until later on in life that I actually truly answered the call. And sometimes I believe that, um, God calls you at different times, just like we call, uh, people on the phone at different times. God does that too. Um, and sometimes it, it's a more important call. Um, and, and you have to be ready to receive that call. You know, you might not be available to answer that call at that time. And, and so there, there's been several calls that, um, God has, has, has done and, and he's still calling me to today. So that's kind of my background of, of how I knew the Lord. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast. Together, let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. Thank you once again for your continued support, and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless. Yeah, I I like that. Um, I've mentioned this to a, a brother uh, the other day. I said, you know, I believe that God gives us two calls. You have first the initial call um, mm-hmm. to salvation, and mm-hmm. then you have the call when he call you back home. That's yeah. it. There's yeah. two calls, two mm-hmm. major calls. So mm-hmm. I want you to walk us through that initial call. What was that moment like? Uh, and walk us through that process. Like what made you surrender? What made you get thought of giving your life to Christ? Um, so just, I, I know you say, you, you know, your parents had their own religion, but I mm-hmm. wanted to hear from your perspective. What was okay. that experience like? Um, well, I got baptized at a very early age, at, at, at 13. And I knew that was the right thing to do. I, I knew it was for... Uh, the salva- for salvation, I knew it was to wash away my sins, and I knew that the the only way to truly have salvation is to be baptized. So I, I I knew the principles, but understanding the depth of that, and again, growing up in the church, you kind of miss that because because you have different walks of life. Some people just grow up in bad situations in life. And then when they come to the Lord, when that call comes, they realize, wow, I've been searching for this peace, you know, and then they can appreciate it more because they know where they came from. Whereas growing up in the church, it's like you don't realize what you have, you know, the the blessing in that. So um, when I went to the military, that's when I was like, you know what, I'm free at last. I can do whatever I want to do. I'm grown. I went and got my tattoo because mom and dad told me, yo, you're not getting no tattoo. I got my tattoo. I got my ears pierced. You know, I was like, I'm grown now. I'm 17 and grown, you know. Um, and so I, I stopped going to church. You know, I didn't, I didn't have to go to church no more. So I stopped going. And for the first four years in the military, I, I did not go. I was young. I was uh, inexperienced with the world, worldly stuff. And so slowly I started getting introduced to some of these things. Like at my first duty station was over in Korea. I'm at 17, first time away from home in the military. And my first duty station is Korea where drinking is legal at 18, you know. And so that's my first time actually drinking alcohol, you know. And so I'm like, okay, this is my first time partying. Like, wow, I really missed out on something. Like I, I missed out on all this fun and I'm now trying to catch up on, you know, the, the, this, my teen years where I didn't do, it was not irresponsible. And I'm just wilding out, according to myself, wilding out. It wasn't really too bad, but it wasn't what a Christian is supposed to do. And I knew that I shouldn't be doing this. However, this is what I want to do. 
And so um, Korea, um, then um, I left from there and went to Alabama and <laughs> Fort Rucker, Alabama. Uh, it's one of the bases that's every one of the gates, there's, there's, there's the projects. And every, every, seems like every woman that in there is looking to find a soldier and it will do any and everything they possibly can to, 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 to get a come up and to, to save them from their situation. And there were several women that I, I that I, or, or girls rather at that time, it's only 17, uh, 18, um, that were trying to do any and everything to get married and everything else. And I, I, I almost fell into that trap. That's that's when, you know, several women and and luckily for me, my my mother and and my father definitely taught me that, you know, I don't need to be messing with a whole bunch of women. Uh, My mom definitely instilled in me, you need to be this gentleman and, you know, one woman, one woman. And I always had one. But let me tell you, some of those women that I had were who, man, they, they were trying anything and everything. And I was allowing them to do any and everything to 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 in attempts to get me there. And so um, I just fell into that life, fell into partying, um, drinking. Um, and then um, I remember um, leaving there and going home. I got out the military after four years and went home, went back, back home to my roots. Why I got out, I have no idea. See, when you really look back on my past, I think about how God's fingerprints have really been on me even when I wasn't doing what I ought to do. So I went back home and still partying and partied up for a year. And that's when I met my, my ex-wife. And um, I had beat the stereotype. I had survived the military. I wasn't married. Um, and, I, and I met my ex, ex-wife. And um, at that time, you know, I beat the stereotype. I had my own place, had my own car. I was doing good. I had my own place, you know, and, and you know, just just beating the stereotype what society says that me as a black man would would not be. And so I decided to have a baby at, at age 23. And even knowing what the word of God says, not being married, I says, I want to have a baby. Now, that don't make good dumb sense looking back on it now, you know, but I wanted it. And, and, and in my mind, that's what was right. And so um, um, I met her, had a baby, and wind up getting married for the wrong reason, because of the baby. Um, and that kind of started it, started it there. Um, uh, 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 there's one part of the story I want to back up on. When, when I was in the military at, 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 in Alabama, I, I decided one, at one particular time, I had four years to go to church. Let me go back to church because that's the right thing to do. And when I went there, uh, there was a preacher that was there um, and we shared a story. We laugh about the story all the time. Um, he knew who I was because I dated a preacher's daughter when growing up. So he knew who I was. I didn't know who he was. And he was just reading me like, I know who you are. And I'm like, how you know me? I don't know you. And so he had already had plans. I'm going to get you here to lead songs and you're going to get here and do this and this. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm just here for the day. After this, I'm gone. Right. And he already had somebody he was trying to hook me up with and this whole nine yards. And and so after that day, I gave him my number to the barracks, which I never was there because I was actually staying with my girlfriend. Um, and I ducked and dodged him for a good, a good three years. So fast forward back to meeting, meeting my wife and getting married for the wrong reasons. I, um, I went back into military to try to get a better plan because now I have a, a, a daughter on the way. And so while I was waiting um, for my daughter to be born, I, I got back in the military and I was in um, stationed at Columbus, Georgia. And while that time, I'm still got that that partying itch in me. It's just like I'm I'm still not, you know. I, I know what's right. I I know what's right, but I don't want to do right. I just you know I just want to do whatever it is to have quote fun and catch up all the many years that I thought I missed out on it. And so I said to myself, you know what, Arvell, um, your family has to wait to get up here till you get housing. You might as well get all the partying out, and then you'll be done with it. Right. And let me tell you, uh, Nick and Adney, I party. I party harder than I had ever done 
every day of the week. I was out there partying, partying hard. I was out there drinking, coming home intoxicated. It was just uh, just was having what I thought was a ball. And when my family finally came, probably like six months later, it didn't stop. It didn't stop. I couldn't stop. It just felt so good. And I felt like I was missing out on something and I was I was selfish. Um, here here it is. I, I have uh, two children that I need to you know, set the example for. I have a wife and I'm like, nah, you got what you wanted. You want to get married. I didn't want this, you, you, you know, because you told me you was going to get rid of the baby. If I didn't marry, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And that's what I was doing. I was partying hard. And then I remember the day as if it, if it was yesterday. I was in the club and I was drunk and I'm looking around and I'm seeing the same, same hoochie mamas. I'm seeing the same old guy trying to heal these young girls. I'm seeing the, the same old man with, with selling the roses and, and taking the pictures and selling it. Then say, which probably probably going on right now still today. I'm I'm pretty sure of it. And I I I'm I'm on the dance floor. I'm sweaty, and I just stopped. And I said, "What am I doing? What is wrong with me?" And that is when God tapped me on the shoulder right there in the club and was like, "What are you doing? I've let you wild out for these last four five years." What it's time for you to do what I need for you to do. And that's the time I stopped. And even during this process and, and I had I was attending church and I, I and I walked into my family finally got here and I walked into the looking for a, a congregation to worship at. And I'm looking on the billboard. I'm looking at who the preacher was. And I'm like, that name sounds so familiar. And when I walked in the door, lo and behold, it was the same preacher that I had ducked and dodged while I was in Alabama. And he said, yeah, boy, I am not going to let you go this time. You ducked and dodged me. You ain't going nowhere, n- never. And so uh, that was when they first got in that. But I was still partying. And I had brothers it's, it's coming to me, brother, you need to, you need to, you need to repent. You need to come. I said, look, our bell draper going to do what our bell draper going to do. And when I'm ready, I'm ready. And then that's when I had that, that, that call by God then. And I remember a sermon, um, uh, Herman Wesley preached. And I remember it just pricked me and pricked me. And I was like, what am I doing? You know, God had already tapped me on the shoulder. was like, what are you doing? And I'm hearing this, this sermon. And that's when I said, I got, I, I got to, it became my religion. Then. It was no longer my parents' religion. It was my religion. When I look back on how God just saved me from certain situations. And, and uh, I'm telling you, there were so many situations, um, guns, fire shootouts because I'm in the club and God just had his hands on me and blessed me. And I was like, thank you, Lord. And it was at that point that I I answered that first call. Wow. What a story. What a story by brother Arvell Draper. We're going to cut it off right here and we're going to prepare for part two. And I enjoyed his story, Sister Adney. I began to think when I was in the world and I and I and I was clubbing and this is what I believe. I believe that there are demons and devils in the club. Um it's a dark place. Um it's a place where um you are easily influenced by drugs and alcohol and even the music. And so I believe that if God were to unveil and take the scales off our eyes, we would see the demonic forces, uh, our brother would say, are to see celestial beings on people, influencing people to do sinful acts. And I'm glad that God got his attention. And it, it's, it's amazing to me how he just said he was just sitting back and he started to analyze and examine the, the crowd. And he was like, this, this is not me. I need to go back home. I need to go back to the Father. So this story, Adney, I enjoyed it because, again, like I alluded to, it, it resonated with me. Uh, what are your thoughts? I had the same experience. Um, <laughs> I remember the outfit I was wearing. It, it was some white shorts with a, a colorful top with, with teal in it. And I bought me some teal pumps. 
um, excited to go to the club that night. I still had my locks freshly started. Like I remember the makeup I had on, everything. And while I was in the club, I'm not a drinker, um, but music is my thing. I'll stay on the dance floor all night. And as I was dancing, looking around, and it was just the same old, same old dudes coming up to you, trying to dance with you. They ain't even pay your way, not even offering you a drink. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you know, you know, so it got to that point for me. Like, God was like, why are you here? You're not ready to give it up. And I and I just I, I remember that was my last time. And when my family would ask me, hey, we go, nah, I'm good. And I, I, ne- I never went back. Hey, man. So. Man, Adney, I, I'm so thankful to God that we are in the body of Christ. So, again, y'all, you guys heard it, Arvell Draper. Uh, may God get the glory out of his story because there's more to come. So um, stay tuned for part two. And remember that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. Be blessed. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also, Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.